of their entire claim and life and relationship with us so that they do not permit even an inch of doubt to be placed on baptism. Baptism is the strongest and weakest point in their system against us because on the one hand, in strength, it is where the Sestak AVs are created. It's where their curse, remember they're cursing us in baptism. The cursing us is created. In weakness, of course, it is founded on fraud. The baby has no reason or right. There's no choice. There's no consent. So it cannot possibly be law. But they overcome that by then adding, once baptism's in place, layers of guardianship, executorship, and layer and layer and layer of control so that their argument is you can't argue against baptism because you haven't dealt with the fact that we are guardians over you, you're incompetent, uh, you didn't consent at 18, and really it's a whole range of rubbish. It's all rubbish. They won't even let you argue on baptism until you've dealt with everything else. So at the end of the day, they're not going to admit. They will never admit that their system is founded on fraud. So there's no point putting an annulment until you have your alternate dream, your alternate world at such a level that your communities are in place, that you're functioning as communities, that you're actually functioning courts, and then at that level you can render it annulled. But until then it's... Well, is it annulled? Yes, it is annulled without you even doing it. But will they take any notice? No, they won't take any notice at all. Well, uh, so then the next question really falls in line with this. Can you talk a little bit about the decree of nullity? Uh, That's the next part of Well, actually, it's the next question on the chat. Well, look, it is important, and it's important for you for you to know who and what you are and the power that you have. But what we haven't done yet is we haven't focused in numbers on their system. At the moment, we are a collection of ones. We're a unique collective awareness, but we haven't focused as bodies. We're not like groups yet. We're not like... uh, uh, like, uh, uh, I was going to say uh, mental blank, but I'm just thinking of of juries in terms of um, we have not collected ourselves together yet where we can grand juries. Yeah, we have not collected ourselves yet. Well, yes, but you can also relate that to an orchestra. It's not a full orchestra yet. Yeah, we're just learning how to play instruments at the moment. Right. And, and, And so when we start to get into groups, I mean, can you imagine what what 26 competent Eucadian members will do when they go to court, each of them with more knowledge than a judge as a grand jury, what power they will be able to wield at a local level. Well, it's been shown that it's it's, it's quite amazing authority and power that 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 will yield. So we've we've got great things to look forward to, but let's start with the, let's start with, with uh, the reading, the learning, knowing who and what we are, and the decree of nullity is part of that. So, yes. Okay, very good. All right, so then could you explain now how the credit system of Acadia can take over the debt-based monetary system uh, when it crashes? Sure. The, the issue is not necessarily just by the way, I mean, the credit system is there. I mean, the, 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 the different layers of money is there. The background's there. The charters of the banks need to be updated and some of the ledgers need to be updated and some of the references uh, are need to be updated. But that's by the by. And the reason I haven't c- continued on that is because the strength of the monetary system of Eucadia is that it, recognizes the original nature of what money is. So there is private money and there is public money. Public money 
is ultimately whatever any two people accept as a reasonable medium. So I, I could be paid in cows or you could be paid in wheat or someone could be paid in lumber. And that's exactly how the world dealt with. And until priests developed an idea where they used their temples as exchanges and they were the first stock exchanges. First stock exchanges were temples. It's why when you read the New Testament, look, why are there animals in the temple? I mean, they, they argue that they're there for sacrifice. They're really hiding the fact that a priest is not going, look, let, let's be clear here. I mean, what does a kosher butcher tell you? A kosher butcher tells you that they're not going to simply take a cow that you roll into a temple and say, thank you very much, yes, can you sacrifice that for me, no problems. I mean, that's absurdity. So the New Testament hides the fact that there are animal and stock in the temple so that you don't realize that when Jesus goes in, he's going into the stock exchange and saying, this is an abomination. This is a temple, not a stock exchange. So they hide that. Um, the reason Karnak, Thebes, is such a massive temple, the largest temple complex ever created, it was the global stock exchange. Now, in those days, they took the medium of, of cows, wheat, whatever, and then they exchanged them for private money, private temple money, which were certificates, certificates for temple money that was authorized because it had spiritual credit. So the Eucadian system resets and realigns the fact that when the divine spirit infuses with a medium that we accept and that it is viewed as credit, all the credit we ever need can be created and set in place. And that is what the Eucadian money system is doing and has been and is ready to go. The only reason that it has not been launched is that the foundations in the canons and some of the tidy up in the canons need to be run because I assure you once it starts it's going to create well potentially a frenzy and there will not be the opportunity in that environment to take the care and the time I wish there was but reality I think would, would prove me wrong the time to make sure that the foundations are absolutely perfected there's no point maybe for us sure I mean if we're okay uh, it can be argued, well, what about the future? But really, Eucadia is not about, well, certainly it's never been for me about making myself rich. It's about doing the right thing for the future. So it just needs a few more weeks, a few more tweaks, and then it's ready to go. All right. Thank you, Frank. Um, well, thank you for spending the extra time. Uh, we have a a couple other questions if you have still a couple more minutes. Uh, there sure. is a, the guest on the chat would like for you to define matrimony or holy matrimony a little bit further, if you, if you would, please. Uh, yeah, look, go and have a look at the Ecclesi canons of ecclesiastical law because that's probably, I'm starting to lose my voice actually a bit at the moment. Um, I'm still getting over the, the flu. So <clears throat> um, go and have a look at the canons of ecclesiastical law and you'll see the difference between marriage and matrimony. And if you're not satisfied, then you know, shoot us an email, but it's there. Okay? Yeah, that's a good place to start. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. A um, uh, question for you. Do you know anything about the black stone of Mecca or the Kaaba stone? Yeah, it's the foundation stone of Kaaba. Uh, it's the black meteorite. The black meteorite represents Kaibel or Sybil. And what we were talking about earlier, which was meteorite storms. If you're living in civilizations 2,000 years ago or older, and every few years you would see a civilization totally and utterly destroyed by black meteorites, then what would be a god that you worship? It would be meteorites. And of course, that is the uh, simulacrum of, uh, of uh, uh, Kybel. And of course, uh, the base in which the meteorite was uh, put in uh, their belief system was called a kirki. 
uh, and of course Kirky or Kirk is the origin of church it's the cradle it's the cradle of Kybel the Kirky or Kirk so yeah I mean on the Kabar you have people kissing the black meteorite of Kybel not realizing that that is the mother goddess that uh, connects to the Vatican I mean it's it's obvious but you know they don't understand that all right Wow well I hope some other folks have had their well moments for tonight because there have been several <laughs> and uh, thank you for for being with us tonight and sharing uh, everything you have and the extra time especially since you're just bouncing back from your uh, flu symptoms um, someone here is suggesting if you uh, haven't already to take colloid or silver um, I would recommend that too and we gargle with it and do you can put it up your nose if you're stuffed up or in the ear if your ear aches and uh, so I don't know if you have that Frank but uh, someone has recommended that um, oh, I'm getting uh, I'm that. getting there but, yeah thank you Terry thanks for yeah. everything tonight and the hosting and thanks for all the questions tonight as well yes thank you everyone for all your questions and uh, if you had anything else that you wanted to wrap up with Frank um, then we can call it a night uh, just just or, or just um, don't don't ever give up hope don't ever feel that you're abandoned don't don't ever feel that in spite of everything that that the forces are too powerful just just keep remembering who and what you are keep looking at, at the small things in your life that remind you and uh, and, and know that that they had hundreds of years to get to where they are we're, we're doing this in days weeks and months and keep if you keep it perspective then then I'm sure that that you won't lose that hope you won't have that hope stripped from you when when the system rallies itself against you and again thank you Terry thanks to everybody for what you're doing yes you're welcome Frank thank you so much for joining us tonight and we'll be on the same time same place next week great all right. Thank you, Frank. Thank okay. you, everyone, for Good joining night. us. That's a wrap. Good night, everyone.